So in a previous video, we did a review on this KM601 that we're fortunate enough to get sent to us by Kiwitz. And we looked into this meter and had a lot of fun looking into the functions. We compared it alongside the readings from my Fluke 179 as well as our ideal current clamp. We just did a brief overview of the meter and it performed very well and I really liked the display. But we did run out of time in that video. And in this video, I would like to look at the battery life as well as do a look inside of the KM601. So we'll start off by removing the battery cover again. This is a threaded insert type screw. And we notice we do have our three AAA batteries. And we do know that alkalines do have an issue with corrosion. So this is just a recommendation or, or just a choice we have besides being rechargeable or alkaline. We also can do the ultimate lithium or some type of lithium a AAA battery. And as we see here, they show here that they're leak proof. So I do like to use these in my higher end devices and things that the batteries might stay in for years um, and, and actually don't corrode and ruin the battery connections and maybe the board. So just a thought, if nothing else. Now I'm going to take an insulator with two battery spot well strips and put it in line with my, with my batteries. That way I can, in milliamp function, I can take a meter and, and put it across these tabs, these little spot well tabs with that insulator. And now, let me move the connection here. There we go. Now we should be able to get a reading on our meter. It looks like we're at about 28 milliamps. I'm pretty satisfied with that, especially to be a color LCD display with that much backlight. And we see here, we change modes, our five blinks of our jack indicators here. We see it fluctuating from like 28 to like 33, 34 milliamps. So that's only going to happen for five blinks. So I'm not really worried about that. Just a quick go through the functions here. We do see it's a tad bit higher on the milliamp scale here. About the same for the amp scale. We at like 31 and up to 35, 36 with the LEDs blinking for the jacks. And we go back to auto. We just fluctuating there, going back and forth. But if I just had to come up with an easy number to calculate here, I would say, just to make it easy, let's say 30 milliamps. These are 1200 milliamp hours. And if we use the 30 milliamp, we're talking about 40 hours, give or take, use on this meter. So with 15 minute auto power off, we could roughly say 160 uses, so that's pretty impressive. I think we just need to dig right into the meter, so I'm going to start taking the screws off. And right away we see here that the, uh, the four corners of the cover are not metal insert screws. They are different, so we're just going to keep them separate here as we take the cover off. Looks like we do have to pry this open. And yeah, we do have a few catches here. I do like how this fits together. It fits together pretty snug and we'll just have to gently pop that out. And there we go, we're in. I do like how the battery cover makes contact with the board. So the back cover actually has the battery holder and the contact points built in. So even if we had the corrosion like we talked about, it actually would not affect the board unless it was really bad, so that's cool. We see our jacks here are split. That's how we know when our jacks are inserted for indication of uh, which, which jack our leads are plugged into. Our battery connection contact points here look, look really nice. We have a relay. That looks to be our buzzer. That's a little unusual to me, but 
There's a microcontroller, the main microcontroller, and the one for the LCD. The buttons all do feel good. There's our flashlight LED. A little bit up close of the relay and the microcontrollers here. If you would like to see them. The flashlight LED is actually a better quality LED than I thought it would be. We're just not driving it hard, which is a good thing. We don't want to pull them off the batteries and we have to. So this is our non-contact. looks like a strip rather than a coil like I mentioned in a previous video. I do like how they have the push button plate here. That's neat. So we can remove that pretty easily once we uh, remove the screws off the board. We'll speed through the video here to save time. But I do want to mention here that I did decide to take all six screws, the three on the left and three on the right of the upper board, a loose. And I knew this goes to the LCD display. And you typically probably wouldn't want to take these six out if you're just taking the board out. But I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to look at the elastomeric strips as well. Oops, left one screw in here. Let's get them all out. Yep, yeah, it's easing out. Yep, see our elastomeric strips. There's our LCD. We have to pull our jacks out. It's also on a plate. That's cool. And there we go. We're completely out. Even the LCD with these six screws are loose. You don't want to remove those if you don't want to take the LCD off, of course. Can't really see much about the backlight, but there's our backlight connection. And there's our strips on the board where our zebra strips or elastomeric strips meet up. Just a quick look at that. I'm going to put these six screws back in. You can see the six that I'm talking about here as we put them back in. I don't want those to get dirty or fingerprints or anything on them. I want to keep those connections good and clean at the moment. Again, the push buttons feel really good on it. A little bit better look at the jack here and the way that it's split there on the current jacks itself. Our HRC fuses, our voltage divider, and there's our PTC. I don't see any MOVs, but no MOVs on a Category 4 meter. I guess I thought they would have them, but they're getting by with these here. But overall, the quality of the board is, uh, is very nice. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below as well. Okay, there's our LED that does our voltage indication. One more look through the board here before we uh, reassemble. And we'll speed through some of this to save time on camera as well. It's neat how our plate goes here over our non contact and our power on and off button. We'll just be careful to put the, the screws back in the place we took them out from because they are three different types of screws in this meter. Here we go, we're gonna line our cover back up, make sure our contact points are clear. The push button, um, the rubber bumpers, make sure they slide into the notches here. It snaps back together, pretty cool. We'll fast forward through putting these four screws back in.
And I am going to put in our Energizer Ultimate Lithium Triple A's. And we power on automatically. I feel better about um, the battery contacts with these batteries, but I'm sure the alkalines that come with it will be just fine for years. I just want to have these in there and no worries. I put these in several of my uh, meters. Oop. Almost got away from me. Flashlight check. Auto power off check. Auto function. Everything like it works. The range check. Our relative and hold button. Our min and max select. Auto function. Yep, everything's back working. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick video looking inside of this Kawitz KM601. I really appreciate Kawitz sending it out to us to look at. You'll be able to see this in action a lot more on the videos that come on the 32 Shed Workbench. I'll have some links down in the description below as an affiliate of Kawitz, as well as a link to the Energizer batteries if interested. And any link you click on does support the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching, and God bless.